This is my friend Brian's car. It's a 1997 Toyota Corolla with the base 1.6 liter engine. For all intents and purposes, you could also consider this a Geo Prism or a Chevy Prism because they are indeed the same vehicle. He was having a problem with the car overheating in traffic. When this happens, it usually points to a problem with the cooling fan. This video shows the process that I went through to figure out what the problem was and also a quick fix that I was able to do to at least allow the engine to not overheat in traffic until winter. So let's get started. Since this car was overheating but only in traffic situations, that tends to point to the cooling fan being at fault. At highway speeds, or generally just when your car is at speed, enough air is flowing through the radiator to allow your cooling system to function. But if your car is stopped, something needs to move air through the radiator to keep your engine from overheating. That's what the cooling fan does. Now, again, since it was only overheating in traffic, that pretty much points to the cooling fan being the problem. So, the first thing that I did was I checked the obvious. Underneath the fuse box, you can see that, and this is broken, but you can see this is fan number one and fan 30 amps. So if we take this off, there's a broken gasket. If we take this off, fan number one is this relay, and fan 30 amp is this fuse. So the very first thing I did was I checked the fuse. Now on my DVOM here, is a nice continuity function where if there is continuity it'll make a beeping sound. I don't know if you can hear that, but as I touch the leads together it makes a beeping sound. So the first thing I did was I pulled the fuse out. And first of all you can see if you look at it, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but it doesn't look blown. But just to double check, put my leads in on each side, and it is a good fuse. Now, whether or not we have power to this fuse is in question, but first I generally will just check to see if a fuse is blown, because that's the easiest thing. I will check, I actually ended up not checking whether or not I had power because I saw what was going on, but the next thing is the relay. Now, relays are essentially electromagnetic switches. They have an electromagnet in it which closes contacts that create a switch. It allows a high amperage device like a fan to be controlled by a low amperage circuit. So to test the relay, what I will do is I'll look on the relay's diagram and you can see here contacts 85 and 86 represent the coil and contacts 87A and 30 represent the actual switch. So 85 and 86, the way we'll know if this relay is, is burned out is if we don't have continuity between 85 and 86. So I just moved my voltmeter to something, a scale like maybe, actually when I did this I just did 200 ohms. So I put my leads on either side of the relay and I have about 78 ohms. So that tells me that the coil is at least not burned out. So then I checked continuity between the actual switch and we actually have 0.4 ohms, so this is a normally closed relay. That means when there is not power to the relay, the relay is closed. Now, all signs point to this relay being good. So, the next thing I did was, I checked to see if I shorted these two contacts, which are the contacts for the switch, does the fan turn on? So, word of caution, if you're going to short contacts in a relay, make sure you know which contacts are which. If you were to short the contacts that turn on the electromagnet inside the relay, you're going to blow a fuse or possibly damage the circuit. So, make sure you know which two contacts are the fan. Now, I used a paper clip to do this and I'll show you how that worked. Now, here's something that I should point out because many of you might yell at me for this method of testing. Ideally, what we would do to check the fan's operation is we would see if there is a short circuit or if there is no circuit. We can just use the ohm meter and see what the resistance is. If the resistance was zero, we'd know the fan is shorted, but if that was the case, the fuse would probably be blown. If the circuit is open, then that means the fan has burned out. So, that's the best way to test this, but unfortunately, the contacts for the fan were very hard to access, and since I was confident that these two are what power the fan, I just decided to short them out with a paper clip. So, when you do that, the ignition will need to be on. So I will turn that on. Now 
Now, again, double check before you do anything which contacts are the switch. We have 87A and 30. This one is 87A and this one is 30. So if I short these two with the paper clip, the fan will run if it works. Now, paper clip is not the best thing to do that, to do this with, because there is a lot of resistance and it will heat up. So you don't want to leave the paper clip in place for long because it might burn you. But the fan is right here. You probably won't be able to see it turning. Yeah, I don't think you can, but you will be able to hear it. So let's see if we get the fan running. Okay, the fan was running. So we know that the fan is good in this car. So now here's something that you might be able to hear. If I put the relay back, you'll hear it click. Do you hear that? That's because, remember, the relay is normally closed. So that means the relay has to be energized in order for the fans to not work. This is a fail-safe system, so that way if the relay burns out, the fan stays on. So that points us to what controls the relay. Well, I didn't know that myself completely, so I turned to the internet. Now, an internet search revealed that in this car there is a coolant temperature sensor located near the upper radiator hose and the thermostat housing. Uh, now, that might be hard for you to figure out what that is if you haven't done any work with uh, the cooling system before, but you can just do a quick Google search and find out what those parts will look like. So, looking at the part and what it looks like, I determined that this is the connector to that part. Now, remember when I said this is a fail-safe system. What that means is if that part should fail, the fan should stay on all the time. However, in this situation, the part is failed, stuck closed. Meaning, when the engine comes up to temperature, the sensor is failing to open, which would turn on the fan. So essentially, the way this works is, that sensor grounds the relay so that the relay stays energized. At the point where the temperature of the coolant rises above, about 210 degrees, I believe, is the right temperature. It will open that circuit, causing the relay to de-energize and the fan should come on. So, the situation that we have here looks like that part is no longer functioning correctly. And even when it gets to the correct temperature, it does not open the circuit and the fan will never come on. So essentially, this fail-safe system has failed at the single point that it could. So. If my theory was correct, then if we disconnect that connector and turn the ignition on, the fan should run. So let's see if that happens. So the way that you disconnect this connector is there's actually a push-in tab right under here. And it took us a while to figure this out, but what you would do is you push the tab up and the connector should come off. Now we had quite a fun time figuring out how to get this off. and it indeed is a pain. However, this is how you do it. I'll get it off and then show you the next step. Okay, so now I have the connector off, and if that indeed is the part that's at fault, then when I turn the ignition on, the cooling fan should come on immediately. And as you can hear, it did. So this means that that single part is exactly what is causing the fan to fail to run. So to recap, the way the cooling system in your car should work is there's a water pump inside of your engine which causes water to circulate between it and the radiator, which is this. These hoses travel from the bottom to the top of the radiator, so that hot water coming out of your engine will go through the radiator and come back into it cool. Now, the reason why your engine is able to maintain a steady temperature is because of the thermostat. The thermostat will prevent flow from entering the radiator until the engine is at operating temperature. This allows the engine to come up to operating temperature in a cold situation. Now, when you're at speed, you don't need a cooling fan because plenty of air is going through your radiator and that will cool the water to the point where once it gets back into the engine, it'll keep the engine at a steady temperature. So in this situation, we can rule out the thermostat because if the thermostat were stuck open, the car would pretty much never reach operating temperature unless it were in traffic. 
Now we know that the engine can maintain correct operating temperature at one driving. And if the thermostat was stuck closed, water would never get into the radiator and your car would be overheating constantly. We also rule out the water pump because if the water pump weren't working, there would be no flow to the radiator. And we can also rule out the radiator itself because, again, at highway speeds, the car operates normally. So that points us to the cooling fan. And in this car, the cooling fan is controlled through the relay. If the relay is energized, the cooling fan will not run. Now this is ideally a fail-safe system, because if the relay were to fail, the contact should close and the fan will stay on all the time. However, we know that that's not happening. And we also tested the relay and we know the relay is good. So therefore, it has to be what controls the relay. Just doing a quick online search revealed that that part down there, this white connector, grounds the relay to the engine and allows it to be energized. So if that sensor doesn't open up at the correct speed, the relay will remain energized, which will prevent the fan from running. The reason why disconnecting the relay fixes this problem, at least temporarily, is because by doing that we force the relay to de-energize, which forces the fan to run. Now while this fix is pretty much temporary, because in the winter you don't want your fan to be running all the time, throughout the rest of the summer it will work. The other reason why this fix is handy is because it doesn't require any parts, and the part that we need to replace on this car is a special order part and is also $40. So by this time in the summer, it might as well just have the fan running all the time. Now this isn't an ideal repair because the fan will now be having more stress on it since it's running constantly. And at highway speeds it doesn't need to run. However, my friend normally drives this in the city and therefore the fan would be running most of the time anyway, so this fix works. I hope this video was helpful to you. In many cars the cooling fan is driven directly by the engine through a belt, so you may need to check a cooling fan belt if it's not working. However, most cars have an electric cooling fan system like this, and even if you don't have a wiring diagram, just by looking at the relay and, and finding out if it's normally open or closed, and then finding where the sensor is or the switch that controls the relay, you can probably solve the problem. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.